As I'm walking, I'm thinking about all of the time, money and effort people have spent and do spend and will spend trying to figure out the meaning of life. I would struggle with the same thing, or I struggled, should I say, with the same thing before I found Christ, or rather before he found me and I accepted him. And the Bible clearly um, explains the purpose for our being, and that's what I'd like to um, touch on in this, this hopefully short video. I'm going to try not to ramble on too much. And let me say this, the commandments have a connection to the, an inseparable connection to the purpose for our being and I'm going to explain from from scripture and I would appreciate you sharing your thoughts in the in the section below so why are we here according to the scripture Isaiah 43 and verse 7 um, tells us read the verse you'll see there written that we were created mankind was created for his the most high's glory remember we're looking at our purpose for being the meaning of life so what is his glory Moses wanted to know this if you read for Exodus 33 you'll reach a verse uh, which contains a request made and by Moses. He is um, sharing dialogue with the Most High and he, he makes a request. He, he says, I beseech thee, show me, show me thy glory. He makes this request of the Most High, show me thy glory. Now in the following verse, you'll see, that, um, the, re you'll see the response to Moses. And in the response, the Most High connects his glory to his name. And he describes three character traits, goodness, grace, and mercy. So the Most High's glory is, is, is basically his character. That's what his glory is, his, his character. So Adam and Eve were placed there in the garden initially. Um, God intended them to be a revelation of his glory, of his love, of his character. Sadly, sin interrupted. But the plan didn't change. Sin interrupted, and since sin entered into this world, uh, Romans 3 and verse 23 tells us quite clearly that all have sinned and come short of his glory, or we've all fallen short of expressing his character or of revealing his love to all around, to all around. Now, sin entered in, the plan was interrupted, but Praise be to him, the, the gospel was instituted. As soon as the, um, the, the, the sin entered in, the gospel was enacted. The gospel was, should I say, um, activated. And what is the gospel? In essence, the gospel is, um, is what the Most High uses to um, restore his image, his glory, his character in his people through his, his Son. So the gospel is there to restore the image of the Most High in his people that's why john describes it this way sorry paul describes it this way in romans chapter 1 and verses 16 and 17 he says that he's not ashamed of the gospel um, in verse 16 he, he describes that it's the power of god unto salvation he then in verse 17 says for in it that is in the gospel the righteousness or the character of god is revealed from faith to faith it is written as it is written the just shall live by faith so when we um embrace christ after he has found us we then go on to live by faith, even from faith to faith. Now what does that mean? Um, Romans chapter 12 and verse 3 tells us that the Most High gives to all men a measure of faith. And that faith needs to be exercised. And that's what happens when we live by faith. When we live by faith, our faith is exercised like, like a muscle. Um, like a muscle, it grows. Romans 10 and verse 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Um, Christ puts it this way in Matthew 4 and verse 4. He says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of, proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Isaiah puts it this way in Isaiah 55 and verse 11. He says, The word proceeds from his mouth and does not return unto him void. He, he says it always has its desired effect. And that's kind of an insight into prayer. We study the Bible, we find the promises, and we, by faith, return them to him. And as we... Um, go through this process, living by every word that proceedeth out of his mouth, returning the promises to him and by faith in prayer, we grow in grace and become more and more in character like Christ, or in other words, we reveal more and more of the Most High's character. Now, going back to Exodus 33, 
If you read on to Exodus 34, you'll see some instruction given to Moses by the Most High. He says, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first. And what did he write on those two tables of stone? He wrote down the commandment. So the Most High asks him, um, sorry, Moses asks the Most High, Show me thy glory. He describes his character. He describes his character. And remember, if you study the um, Old Testament, the Hebrew writers, they use names for the most part as expressions of, of, of a person's character and whenever a person experiences a character change or there are instances in the Old Testament when people experience character change and um, Jacob is one such example Jacob means supplanter remember he robbed his brother's birthright he wrestled with the angel all night um, and he overcame he didn't um, let the angel go until he received a blessing in fact it was the most high he was wrestling with he didn't let the most high go until he received a blessing and he overcame he overcame and his name was changed to israel which means overcomer so after being asked show me thy glory the most high goes on to write down the ten commandments remember his glory is his character is a revelation of his love now when christ was asked about the commandments in matthew 22 which of the commandments is the greatest he went on to describe the first four by saying we ought to have love for god first and foremost he went on to summarize that the remaining commandments by um, describing the fact that we ought to love our fellow man um, even as ourselves and he basically describes the commandments or summarizes the commandments which are a transcript of his character as, as being um, an expression of love and he says upon these two commands hang all of the law and the prophets or in other words the whole of the bible is an expression of the ten commandments it's an expansion and amplification of the ten commandments and the ten commandments are an expression of his glory or in other words his character his love now solomon the wise man when contemplating the meaning of life if you read through the 12th chapter of the book ecclesiastes i think it's verses 13 and 14 um, where Solomon says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, or in other words, let us hear, let's summarize the meaning of life. And he basically says, fear God and keep his commandments. He then says, for this is the whole duty or the purpose for man's being. He then goes on to describe that every work will be brought into judgment. He speaks about the secret things. Now, Paul expressing the same sentiments in um, Revelation chapter 14 and verse 7, he says it this way, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. So compare um, Ecclesiastes 12 verses 13 and 14 with Revelation um, chapter 14 and verse 7. You'll see that um, Solomon and Paul, Solomon and John, sorry, are speaking about the same thing. So what's the purpose for our being? What is the meaning of life? The meaning of life, or what we ought to do, what we're here for, is to glorify him, is to allow him to dwell in our hearts, that his love might be revealed in us and through us. That's why Christ says, if you love me, keep my commandments, because that's the purpose for our being, to to keep the commandments. Sadly, sin entered in, and the gospel had to be instituted, and we can only do this now by his grace. We can only do it by his grace. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Now I've rambled on for a while. Um, just some thoughts on my mind. Um, I'm hoping that that which I've said has made sense. If you've got any questions, I think I mentioned it at the beginning, feel free to ask them in the, the section below. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in hearing whatever feedback you think is necessary. And as I always say, please pray for me as I pray for you.